Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. We have a very special guest with us today. She is a nail artist. Please welcome Crystal, aka Nail Yeah. Hello, Crystal, hey. and welcome. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, that's great. That's great to hear. So I want to go ahead and get started by asking, where are originally from? And tell us about your upbringing. I am from Raleigh, North Carolina. I am a second um, second generation salon owner, and um, I grew up primarily in Southeast Raleigh and mm -hmm. went to the girls club. Um, my mom's a hair. My mom was a hairstylist since I was like three till I was like mm -hmm. twenty five, and. Um, uh, I have to say, like, I really didn't think I was going to wind up in the salon industry. I was always beauty and or fashion um, interested, right. but I just did not want to be in a salon because I saw all the hard work it took to, right. to run a salon and to yeah. stay on top of trends. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what else? Um, I went to Word of God. It's a big basketball school here. Um, and... I think that's about it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Did you have any other interests like prior to nails and beauty? Um, I wanted to be a fashion designer, you know, growing up in the nineties, you know, watching the runway shows, looking at right. all the magazines while I sit in my mom's shop. Um, not just Vogue, but like the Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland hair magazines, you know, right. I was totally into that because my mom and the girls in the shop, they would do uh, fashion shows. And right. so, you know, I was there for practice sitting there. Um, I always thought I wanted to make clothes and I actually used to sew, but um, when I got to college, I was just like, this is probably not for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So understandable. What was like some of like your favorite brands when you had like that interest in fashion? Um, I would say Calvin Klein. <laughs> Calvin <laughs> Klein was the man back in the day, you know, with the underwear, mm -hmm. with the logos mm -hmm. and um, uh, the gap, you know, uh, yeah, I, I like American style, you know, jeans and a t-shirt. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Now, what was like your school experience like in regards to like grade school, college, beauty school and stuff like that? Um, like I said, I, I went to Word of God. Um, it's a big basketball school here. So um, a lot of time, I'm kind of romanticized a lot of things, but like the pastor who was the founder of the school, he really, really like instilled in us and like, you know, as a teenager, like, oh my God, here we go. He instilled excellence in us and right. having a vision and, mm -hmm. and uh, not deferring from the vision, just, you know, keep mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, when you're a teenager, it's like corny, you know, but right. as, I've, as I've grown, it has stayed with me to make sure I write my vision down, to look at it often, um, I went to uh, an art institute in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, they're gone now. <laughs> I don't oh. know if you know about their art institutes. <laughs> they're oh. gone now. Uh, we still have student loans, but they don't exist right. anymore. Right. Uh, what can I say about that school? That's, it was interesting because I got, mm -hmm. I got what I needed. And I, and I feel like at every step, I've gotten a dose of the real world. Um, yeah, in my schooling uh, mm -hmm. to prepare me. Um, I had a, a, a professor that really tried to, he saw part of like what I was doing. I was really into marketing when I was in school. I went to school for fashion marketing. I went for a, a two year program. Um, okay. I'm just not a school person. I'm a hands on person. Yeah. 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 yeah um, and so he really tried to uh, help me grow. Like, I, uh, he let me do a gallery uh, after I graduated. They had, we had a gallery, like, when you first walk into school. Right. Um, other than that, I figured out about six months into school that it wasn't for me. But mm -hmm. I wanted to get that piece of paper because it's, like, drilled into our minds. Like, you got to have a degree to do something. Which right. Is also part of the reason why I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to go to college for long. Well, no, I didn't want to go to hair and nail school because, you know, up until the internet or even social media, 
it's kind of looked down on to go to hair and nail school. Like that was kind of like a other kind of thing. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. We did have our celebrities, so I saw that side of it, but I also saw the side of getting up at five o'clock in the morning and leaving mm -hmm. late in the afternoon and the evening. Right. Um, in the 90s, those girls were working hard. Um, so, mm -hmm. I, uh, so, yeah, I, I finished school and then I started doing makeup during school. Uh, this is like 2004. And I graduated and I did makeup from 2004 until like 2010 ish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. So I want to definitely get into the nail scene. I want to push forward talking about that. Okay. Now, how would you describe the nail salon scene like Raleigh, North Carolina? Like, what are some of the most popular styles in terms of nail services or nail art that's popular in that area? I'll be honest with you. Everything you see on Instagram, you can get in Raleigh. Like Raleigh mm -hmm. has a flourishing nail community um, from Russian manicures, duck nails. Uh, you got, we have a gel only salons. We have a traveling pedicurist who mm -hmm. focuses on dry pedicures. Mm -hmm. um, of course we have the acrylic and we have amazing artistry here. Uh, like I said, it's some of everything here in Raleigh. I would even, I would even put us up against New York and LA probably better mm -hmm. just because like there's so much freedom here because we have so many people moving here from other areas. Yeah. And so, like whatever you're really into, you can find an audience for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Do but you that feel like mean, that don't mean that everybody needs to move here to do nails? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. Do you feel like Raleigh, North Carolina is like the most slept on as far as like, you know, the nail scene? Because I know New York and L.A., you know, are the most popular, you know, areas as far as nails. And, you know, of course, New York, considering the fashion mecca, do you feel like, you know, Raleigh is slept on? I do, because even if you look at where the shows go, like the trade shows, the nail shows, mm -hmm. we might get a Cosmoprof show and they might have like four booths. But really, there's nothing in between. I'm gonna say Tennessee. Uh, Jill Wright does this show every year in Smoky Mountains. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not exactly sure. Okay, there's a show every year, like June in Smoky Mountains, and then there's premiere in June or July. Yeah, well, premiere. They, they're both in June or July. We don't get none of that. Like even the nail supply stores here, they cater to the Vietnamese salons, so you're not gonna get the high quality. You know what? I'm let me. I'm wrong. We just got a new nail supply store, and they got Gelex, and okay. all of us were on Instagram like DMing each other, like, "Girl, they got Gelex at the new beauty <laughs> supply store." You know, because right. we have to order that stuff online. You know, right? I've been I've been begging. Can I name drop or should I not name drop? I'm gonna just do it. I've been begging Nail Labo and Presto to. I stopped actually a couple of years ago, but at first I was begging them, please do something here. Host classes here because Japanese gel, Korean gel is huge here. Russian yeah. manicures are huge here. Like yeah. the girls here don't mind spending money for a manicure if it lasts because right. people here want quality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And to add on to that same thing with like here in the DC, uh, you know, Washington DC metropolitan area, like people mm -hmm. want like the quality stuff. Like, you know, there's salons out there that are doing like dry, like manicures and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know. And I feel even with Washington DC, like DC area, like Maryland, DC, Virginia, it's slept on too, because there are some talented nail artists in in, in in the area in our area too. Yeah, and I've had several clients move up there and they're like, where do I go? Because they can't find people. I, I follow this guy on Instagram who like just talks about, I want to say it's Nail Techs in PG County. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his name is, but like he just features independent nail techs and he goes, he has a manicure or he goes with someone having a manicure and like that's all his posts, that's all he posts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I agree with you. I've seen some some dope art come out of that. Um, who is that? Cold Nails is up there, I think. I might be wrong. I never heard of Cold Nails. I heard of um there's a few nail artists in Virginia that I, I can't I can't remember their names, but I know there's some there's some good nail artists in Virginia, mm -hmm. some nail artists good, you know, some good nail artists here in Maryland, certain parts of Maryland. 
um, things like that, especially in DC. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's definitely like, I felt like certain areas there again, like, you know, you know, Raleigh, you know, the Washington DC metropolitan area, certain areas are just very slept on because, you know, everybody looks at, like I said, there again, New York and LA and, you know, the whole thing with the premiere show, like the trade shows are like in Florida, um, LA, you know, New York, you know what I mean? Tony, um, though. Yeah, yeah. In San Antonio, but like they need to have one that's like that's like closer because like I said, like, and I'm saying Raleigh is dope, but then there's Durham, which is like another city that's like probably like a half an hour away from here. It's like the same size as Raleigh. Mm -hmm. I, I can just say North Carolina in general has dope nail techs like every corner. Um, mm -hmm. I, I started this page called NC Black Owned. And um, one of the first reels that we did was uh, a passive phone reel. And so um, I included probably like seven or eight other nail techs and it went viral. And there were so many people in the comments saying that they didn't even know they existed, you know? Right. It like opened up a whole nother world for people. But so I see it because I follow everybody. I follow the Raleigh hashtags, the Charlotte hashtag, Charlotte nail hashtags. Um, Durham nail hashtags but like I just feel like overall in general like this is a place where there's so many creative nail techs but they're just not um they're just not well known right yeah mm -hmm. right absolutely most definitely and the thing is one thing I've noticed too as well and that's and that's the thing let me say first of all let me say this. that's the thing with the power of social media because it connects you to people that you didn't know exist, like how you said before. But also to what I've noticed when I look up on Google about like nail salons in the DC area, it's always Asian owned salons. Right. You know what I mean? More than it, way more than it is with black owned nail salons. You know, you don't see it in the Google uh, search, you know, so you have to look, you know, in Instagram or TikTok or whatever to find those people. I think so, but um, okay. So since I went to school for marketing, I feel like one of my strong points um, is going back, going to school back in 2002, 2003, that time when the internet was still like a baby. Right. It's still like MySpace was out there. Mm -hmm. So I've seen like the, um, the gradual, I've seen all the growth in the internet. So like, I know, right. yeah. yo, so if you type in best nail salon in Raleigh, my salon is going to be up in top five and I didn't pay anybody to do that. It's just that when I built my website, I just feel like uh, maybe people don't know about SEO or keywords to use. Um, right. Having their um, having their clients and people, you know, people around them, leave them reviews, um, you know, taking advantage of the free um, of the free things like uh, like Google. You can register your business with Google, put your address in there, put pictures up there. I feel like just people just don't know. And it's overwhelming. I've done it. I've been in business for 10 years. So to me, it made sense when I was setting up my business to just go ahead and do that and mm -hmm. um, go ahead and do that and keep it, uh, try to keep it as current as possible. So right. I, I think that's a big part of it. It's yeah. people not knowing about that, thinking they have to pay somebody because that is a whole nother skill set. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Doing keywords, hashtags and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. So I want to get into your nail salon. Nail, yes. Yeah. So I want, Speaking of that, you know, what has been the journey of having your own like nail salon? And was there any obstacles that you faced building and developing your salon? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I started I started nail. Yeah. In 2013 was the first year that it was officially. This is my 10th year. Um, mm. It started on my friend's kitchen table. Uh, I came back. I came back uh, from New York, New Jersey. I was doing nails unlicensed there, but I was only working on set because uh, I did nails on set, I guess, along with doing makeup. Mm -hmm. And so I came back and I got my license when I moved back here. I had just had my daughter, mm -hmm. and um, I've been working on set for like ten years. So I didn't really see me going to work at the mall selling makeup i already did that i wasn't trying to i know those hours i right. wasn't trying to live that life anymore you know right right because um, i just don't have the flexibility with a child so um i just didn't want to so mm -hmm. 
I started on my friend's kitchen table and then eventually she was like, yeah, so my hairstylist has an extra room and um, you should stop bringing your stuff over here. <laughs> You know, like you, you should work out something with her and see if you could, you know, get a room. Right. So that's what I did. And um, I stayed there for about a year and then I decided mm -hmm. to venture out on my own. And I actually worked um, a full time job at a like a luxury spa, high end hotel, restaurant mm -hmm. in Cary. And um, I built my clientele like as I while I was there. So um mm -hmm. all, all my groundwork all my building my website all of that like because i was a freelancer and i knew what it took to make a name for myself to build right. a reputation i knew that i needed to do both for a while and just like so i could really focus on my business mm -hmm. so probably about 2016 i went ahead and i left my job because i was starting to get so busy Mm -hmm. um, I took a leap of faith and left my job and um, things were going well. So I was doing like, mm -hmm. I had, I had moved from one space to my second space and I had um, my, my second space was a storefront on Glenwood Avenue, which here is like a busy street where the nightclubs are. Mm -hmm. and right. We're like, Oh, you're downtown. You know, so I, I lost some people going downtown, um, which is where everybody wants to be now. And then I started hiring people. And so this is where it gets interesting because I, I had management experience, like retail management. Right. But not ownership management experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I probably went through about five employees before I decided to like not do employees anymore just because it was really difficult to manage my salon help to train people and then um managing people you know right. it takes a special skill set to manage people right because around like 2016 2018 even up to 2020 you know the internet was just social media was really starting to pop with nails like a lot of a lot more people were getting into nails they were saying it's like the top five job to have right so people going to school a lot of people pursuing nail art right and um you know i just had i had just regular job personnel stuff you know like right i worked with one girl who knew a girl who was working with me um over at mm -hmm. the spa and she would be, and I would be like, well, how, you know, you know, how is she before I hire her? And she was like, eh, you know, she'll come to work, work wait, late and she'll be eating. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll watch out for that. I think that could, you know, deal with that. That's, and one day she got to work like 30 minutes late with chicken. And I was just like, oh, we can't do this anymore. You know, I, I just went through a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, I just got a girl in here, a woman, excuse me, who, um, she is actually booth renting and I was so afraid to do it because I've been so hurt like around 2020. Um, I, I just had, it was just like one thing after another with employees. Right. Yeah. So like, mm -hmm. I know this isn't a question, but like I would say for people who want to be a boss, you know, like go ahead and take some management courses, watch some YouTube videos about management, mm -hmm. um, learn all you can fire people like let them go because you'll make the money back <laughs> um right yeah mm -hmm. i want to definitely go ahead and push forward and talk about pricing so what has been the journey as far as like pricing your nail and nail services did you find it difficult in the beginning as far as like finding a price to really charge you know as far as your nail services and nail art um at first i tried to be competitive to what the other salons were charging because I was working in a high end salon mm -hmm. in 2013 they were charging a hundred dollars for a pedicure and we were getting it you right. know um, mm -hmm. but at my space it wasn't the same atmosphere you know and it was not the same clientele 
Um, so like I said, I tried to compete with the strip mall salons. Um, and then I would try to do things to differentiate myself, but I had to go back to a formula that I learned when I was in school. Um, you know, the one where you take like all your bills and you divide up your time. Um, mm -hmm. so you can find out what you need to make all your bills and like your savings. I, I don't know exactly the, the formula, but it's like you, all your bills and the money you would like to make on the side and you divide it up for the months that you work 40 hours. And that that lets you know how much you need to make hourly. So I've gone to that model and I've been thinking about at least taking my art and making my art cost more. I'm a little nervous because where I'm at now, I'm, I'm booked and busy, but like um, mm -hmm. you catch more flies when you're more affordable, you know, than you would with, uh, with, with charging a lot. You know, I'm, I'm in that space where I've been doing this for 10 years. So could right. I validate it by saying, yeah, I've been in this for 10 years? Probably. But um, I don't know. I just don't see people spending that much. Like I was around in the 90s. So I saw how people like flock to certain hair salons. I think that's stuck in stuck with me over years. Right. They flock to certain hair salons and they're paying all this money. And then all of a sudden that stylist, um, Mm -hmm. you know people I don't know I don't know I'm funny mm -hmm. about that kind of stuff mm -hmm. am I even answering your question <laughs> yeah, I, it, answered, it answered my uh my question a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah I I just like I just see people charging so much and I'm just like is that still yeah. sustainable for the long term you know like yeah now you're a boss but to sustain those same clients, and I mean, I see it with the, the really trendy long nails or the really ornate nails, like long term, is that person going to keep coming back, you know, right. for that same service over right. 10 years, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I think about. And that's why I price myself the way I price myself, I guess it's more out of fear, but also like, I know what works for me, you know, right. Mm -hmm. And that is getting like my hourly, you know, and um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's very, very interesting because, you know, one thing I've noticed what nail arts kind of do like, you know, and uh, with a lot of nail arts I've spoken with on the podcast, you know, we've talked about pricing, to understand your worth and your value and people charging, you know, 500 plus dollars, you know, or so for, you know, press on nails that are well designed and things like that. I do believe that there are some people in the nail community that overly charge, you know what I mean? So of course it's, it's cool to know your worth and your value, but you know, you have to sometimes understand why are you charging it at this price? You know, right. what, what makes your nail set worthy of that price? You know right. what I mean? Of course, not just with the, you know, the products and of course the products that's part of it and the time that's part of it, but it's like, you know, what makes it special as far as you charging it at this price? You right. know what I mean? If you do like a, if you do like an $800 nail set, you know what I mean? It has to be a good $800 nail set. You know what I mean? Right. So that's the thing. So like me personally, I, I like to do things with a lot of detail and stuff, you know, and mm -hmm. I've always been an artist first. I've always been an artist you know, doing art. I love doing nails and things like that. You know what I mean? You know, so you have to create something that is remarkable for it to, you know, to have that price. Right. And I agree. You are artist first. And I, I look at myself as an artist first too, but so I've been, I've been around long enough to where my artistry didn't matter to some people, you know, and I had to right. find those clients, but that stays with you. You know, you never really, it's a process to get out of that mindset of, you know, I need to get these plain polished people so I can sustain myself, you know, or I need to be, you know, I need to be really proficient at that because my art can't sustain me. You know what I mean? Because people don't mm -hmm. want that. Or if you're ahead of your time and you're out here experimenting, um, you're only a few people are going to be into that, you know? Mm hmm I'm not saying that's for everybody. That's been my experience. Only a few mm -hmm. people are going to be into that far out stuff. Right. That's cool. That's, that's cool. But like, 
Yeah, I just when people put up really ornate artwork and they're like, I did this in two hours and it cost four fifty, I just be like, How? Like I need to teach a I need to take a class from you because like how? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, 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 right, exactly. I want to go ahead and push forward and talk about um, your shop. So you sell cuticle oil, nail stickers, and presso nails. What made you venture into selling other items besides doing nail services? Because there's only so much you can do before you raise your price, before you have to raise your price right. um, to make more money. Mm -hmm. That's just it. Right. Um, like, and also I see, too, I'm selling press on nails now, and also I'm seeing, like, Sometimes people just want a press on nail. They don't have time to sit down, you know, to get their nails done. Right. So with the cuticle oil, um, I just saw an opportunity to, um, to give people, I don't know how to say this, to make a branded product, you know, that could actually help people. I, I'm, I call myself like a, a amateur herbalist, amateur. So my cuticle mm -hmm. oil, I was making more products like around, I stopped actually probably a couple of years ago just because it was too much to keep up. Um, I wanted to make something that's natural that could actually help basically. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. I want to definitely get into aftercare as far as with nails. So after clients getting their nails done, what are some tips you could provide for clients as far as the importance of aftercare and things like that? Um, make sure that you apply cuticle every night. Also, um, make sure that you are keeping your hands out of water. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you wash your hands, wash your body. Yeah. But if you're washing dishes, make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure just go to the Dollar Tree and get some gloves. Right. Uh, to protect your nails because you spend a lot of money on them and it's just a little piece of plastic on the end of your fingers mm. yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah you want to <laughs> main make sure the, the nails are long last for four plus weeks yes yes because they're getting exposed to everything you're digging your, right. nail in your purse you're picking up i i have this thumb here i was mm. trying to peel something off the floor and i knew when i was doing it it was wrong you know mm -hmm. and it came it broke you know so just be mindful of what you're doing with your nails because this stuff is just like a little piece of plastic on the end of your fingernails. Your fingernails break when you mm -hmm. misuse them, when you use them like tools. So just remember that jewels, not tools. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. Use them as jewels, not tools. Absolutely. Yeah. Most definitely. So during your time being a nail tech, have you ever had an experience dealing with a difficult client? And if so, like what was that experience and what did you learn from it? I've had a lot of experiences with difficult clients. Uh, the first thing I have learned is to control my stomach, to control, because my anxiety manifests in my stomach first, then the mm -hmm. heart rate goes up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've had, I've had experience with people where they're asking me what I want to do. And then they turn around and say to me, I don't see that happening. Mm -hmm. That makes me not want to do your nails anymore. Um, mm -hmm. one thing I can think of off the top of my head, one time I was working at the spa and I was about to polish this woman's nails. Um, and I asked her what color and she wanted bubble bath, like a bubble bath type color. And she said to me, I want something new, but kind of like pink, but kind of like brown. And her friend on the other side of the room was like, are you serious? Like. That's the only thing I can think of, like right off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. A lot of crazy stuff has happened doing nails. I, I I had a situation one time. Me and my coworker were working on these two girls, and we looked. We tried to stay in sync because we worked in a spot, like in a setting where we had to be done at the same time. Right. And uh, we looked up, and these two girls were like <laughs> looking at us like that, you know. And so Lord. working in a high end luxury space like that, you got to handle stuff a certain way. Right. So kind of like. You got a composure. You got to, you got to be a Tony award winning <laughs> actress, you know? And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really just try to get them in and out as soon as possible. Like working for myself, 
I'm quick to block somebody if they don't align mm -hmm. with me. But right. in, in a space like that where I am not the boss, um, you know, just try to compose yourself and be kind, move with kindness because it's not you. It's, um, and get them out of there and talk to your manager about them. That's really mm -hmm. it. That's all you can do. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. That's all you can do. Absolutely. So as far as for, you know, new and up and coming nail techs and nail artists, what are some things as far as tips you could provide for marketing, you know, their nail businesses? Okay. SEO, learn SEO. Um, get your name on the internet as much as possible because the search engines, they're just looking for your name. So if you nail, yeah. You know, uh, if you put nail yeah, and you're gonna get a bunch of it, it's gonna it's gonna pop up really really. You're gonna see a lot of things pop up under nail yeah. Um, what else? Your time is valuable, uh, so like use it to do pop ups. You know, find shops in the area. It don't have to be another uh, a hair salon. You don't always have to work with esthetician. Find clothing stores in the area, boutiques that you think are cool. You want to align with those people. Ask them if you can do a pop-up there. I did so many pop-ups starting off. Um, some of them are paid, some of them are unpaid. You can really, you make all the rules. You know, if you want to do free nail art on one fingernail, I mean, I set up at a nightclub. I set up at nightclub several times and just did free nail art on like a fingernail. Um, it's, it's, it's a good way to meet people. It's a good way to meet people out. It's a good way to... Um, Advertise your services, um, parties, nightclubs, what else? Um, if that's your lane, it might not be your lane. You might want to do something to church. Um, mm -hmm. what, what else? What else? What else? Um, post consistently. Everything is comp. Um, everything is um, content. Uh, get some flyers made. Get some business cards made. Be old school. Go to other. Uh, go to barber shops. Go to beauty salons that align with what you're doing and pass out your information there go to festivals set up at festivals if you can afford to do that um and sell your press on nails because you got to go out to the people and let them know that you're here i've been in raleigh for 10 years and people still don't know i'm here and i'm like i've been here i don't know where you've been you know <laughs> i don't know where you've been but now we meet each other so now we know right. each other, you know um and, and then be ready to talk about be ready with your elevator speech. It's going to take you a long time. I've been in this for 10 years. I still don't have an elevator speech that's concrete. Sometimes I still, it depends on my mood. I'm, I'm scared to talk to people. It, be accepting of that because it's all, your mood is going to change depending on whatever's going on in your life. But be ready to talk about your business and let people know. Have your nails done. Look like your business and what you want to promote and what you want people to get. Look like that. And if you don't look like that, be prepared for people to to question what you're doing. And that's OK, too, because people only know what they see. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's anything else. Put a bumper sticker on your car, you know, like it's guerrilla marketing. It's like wear your T-shirts, you know, put your logo everywhere. Do you have a cricket machine? Make your logo, make some information, give it to your clients so they can put it on their car so they can put mm -hmm. it on their notebooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, absolutely. Most definitely. I want to get into your favorite products. So what has been some of your favorite nail products used for nail art and nail services? That Young Nails Primer. Also, um, Bio Seaweed Gel's base coat. I love that. And mm -hmm. Presto's top coat. I'm not a Presto base coat fan, but I love their top coat. The one with the purple label. I can show it to you if you want. Mm -hmm. um, that's like my that's like my trifecta. Also, I just started using uh, Nail Thoughts, her base coats, the colored base coats. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've been ordering the refill sizes because I replaced my Gel X. Um, I was using the Gel X, um, the Gel X gel. I've been using the Nail Thoughts for that. I like it way better. Especially right. if it comes in that bottle, I could just squeeze it onto the nail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th that's those are my things right there. And mm -hmm. of course, um uh, the cocoa is polished i love presto i've been i've been hooked on presto since 2016 so if y'all watching this please send me some free stuff i love y'all <laughs> <laughs> <love> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's really, really cool. So I want to go ahead and really get into um, this one uh, topic. So you had an open gallery event called Art Within Reach. Yes. Tell us about this event and how important it is to highlight other artists from regions of states. Um, because people just don't know. It's not going to take away from what I do. Um, because right. if people want to go to somebody else, they will. And they'll come back later on, probably, most mm -hmm. of the time. You know, people, only your people... I feel like after doing this for 10 years, one thing I used to hear my mama say all the time, even now, it's only your client while they're sitting in the chair. They are only your client while they are sitting in your chair. That is the only time. So how's it going to hurt me to show somebody else another nail tech, you know, um, open it up to another nail tech? Plus, we just don't get recognition still. And we are artists. We're master artists. Right. On tiny canvas. Right. You know? Exactly. And we still don't get recognition. People still look at us like, but you got nail techs out here building equipment. You know, I designed my own nail table. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen that. yeah. You know, and, and that deserves some recognition. And it's not in museums, not here. But so since they're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I want to do it. I want to invite other nail techs into this space because the more people I know, imagine if I get sick, who's going to take care of my clients? I'd rather be... I'd rather spend my time, you know, meeting network, networking with other nail techs who could help me out rather than right. trying to get, keep and keep it all to myself. You know, people mm -hmm. may need somewhere to go to work afterwards. And that's just, that's just on the nail tech side. Right. It could be a place where you, it, you could come in and you can network and meet people that you could work with in the future. You know, mm -hmm. you could co-promote together. So just trying to facilitate community really and mm -hmm. trying to get the community to come in and see, you know, uh, the art from other nail techs because it is mm -hmm. an art form. And then also, too, on another side, it brings people into my salon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Most definitely. Now, what are some things you think uh, the nail industry could be improved on? What are some things you like about the nail industry? Um, I love the artistry. Always have, always will. That's been like the main draw when I was... 15, 16, 17, get my nails done. That was mm -hmm. like the thing that made me want to sit with Shatona every day because I would wash hair for my mom on the weekends and sit with the nail tech Shatona and right. just be in awe of everything she was doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the technology also uh, that 10 years ago they said gel nails were going to be it. And what is it now? Gel nails. Yep. Uh, <laughs> gel nails are the nails of the future. I have some right. thoughts on where I think it's going, but I'm not going to share that because that's for private. <laughs> <laughs> but um, some things I think we can work on, networking still, like yeah. working together. Um, yeah. I'll be honest with y'all, I used to work in a strip club doing makeup back in the day. Mm -hmm. And one thing I would hear the dancers say is they would prefer to work in groups to get money from the customers versus working solo because you could get more money. And that's something that's always stuck with me. If we move as a team, like I said, like who's gonna, you just sending your clients to area strip mall for whoever to take care of them. I have clients that I share with people. So if they can't get in with them, they'll come to me and vice versa. Matter of fact, another nail tech I know is named Crystal, just like me. And she and I share some clients. And I think that's dope. Yeah, I think so, because if I can't take care of they're the person is still getting taken care of by somebody that they that they know, you know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Another thing, too, is I think, you know, and I know uh, I've talked about this with a couple of nail artists is pretty much highlighting black creatives in the nail community, nail industry. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very important. And I think we're still not given the credit properly as far as our contributions to the nail industry. We're not. You know, like I said, I was sitting with Shatona in the back at the nail salon in, in the 90s. Shatona was doing, I got pictures in front of prom, these long nails like Coco from SWV. I, like when I was in school, there was a guy in my class who consistently, when we talked about what we we're going to do outside of school, he would always cut me off when they got to me and he would be like, oh, she going to nail school because for a while, that's what I thought I was going to do. Like I was doing my friend's nails and everything in school, but I didn't want to do that because I just didn't see. It wasn't like now where you got the internet and you can go put your stuff out there. It was right. just like, 
you just had to be sitting in a salon all day taking walk-ins. And I didn't feel like that was what I wanted to do, you know, because right. it seemed like hard. It is hard labor. Absolutely. Hard labor. Yeah. Like those, those girls in the nineties was going all day without eating. Those girls in the nineties was waiting for somebody to, they was running across the street to the, to the store to get a bag of Funyuns and a Coca-Cola. And that was lunch. You know what I mean? Mm. And so even at a young age, I knew I didn't want that. I mean, I've slept in a salon, you know, um, I've been at the salon four thirty, five o'clock in the morning as a young, a young child. So for me, you know, I seen that outside of our community is it doesn't matter, you know, and, and unfortunately still to this day, it's like that, you know, um, so that's one thing I would love to see for the nail industry is, you know, more recognition of black artists because we are the ones who set the trends. We bring in the trends, even though, even though we talk about it so much, it's just like, it just is a death. It falls to a deaf ear. Yeah. It falls to deaf ears. I feel like the only way for us to remedy that situation is to work together. Absolutely. to To pull our money together, to do projects together and take ego out of it and just right. do the work because mm-hmm. we, we definitely, we have the following, we have the numbers, you know, we just need to really put all that other stuff aside and, you know, get back to girl. I like your nails. I like what you're doing. And like, what can we do together to really, um, to really push forward what we're doing, you know, mm, you definitely have the spending yeah. power. Um, You know, I think that, you know, and definitely not even I think I definitely believe that a lot of these brands, especially with whether it's in the nail industry, whether it's in fashion, you know, these brands, you know, without us, like, where would these brands be if, you know, you know, if it weren't for our culture, you know, the music, you know, the nails, all these other trends, the fashion and stuff like that. So, yeah, definitely. I think the biggest thing is to build our own. So one thing I've been thinking about too, like, is these influencers, like these black influencers, the Jackie Ina's. Um, I can't think of anybody. Uh, I know Majesty Timberlake is here in North Carolina. Um, there's black influencers that that just they just started this um, agency of black influencers. It's, I think it's based in Toronto. Um, and I even think about them, like working together with them. Because somebody just posted some nails by, I think it was, um, I don't want to say the name. Somebody posted nails of a brand that's in Target and the nails didn't fit. And Mm. like the internet was clowning it because the nails didn't fit. And it was kind of just like, did she do that on purpose? Or was Mm. she trying to show that they don't make nails that are size inclusive? You know, um, working with people like that You know, uh, it's going to have to be a total, it's going to have to reach outside of the nail community. You know, it's going to have to, we're just going to have to work with people who are the comedians on Instagram. Uh, It's going to have to be like old school, like trying to get into the hands of celebrities who are influential, you know, because the celebrities are trying to stay, they're trying to stay um, relevant. Relevant also, you know, mm-hmm. so it's just like trying to keep working with people, uh, working with different people and, you know, it crossing over with uh, different brands and different nail techs. And right. We're just going to have to work together, really. Yeah, That's absolutely. The way I see us winning, you know, because yeah, you can't stand around and wait for validation from people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that's the thing with that. And I remember doing a panel discussion. And it, and it's, you know, it's cool to have, you know, people as allies. But then again, you know, that's why I said in the panel discussion, when me and three other nail techs was talking about, you know, solutions, I said the biggest thing for us is building our own, is having right. our own business, having our own platform so we can highlight each other. You know right. what I mean? So that's the thing with that, you know. And we understand that there's racism, you know, in these different industries, especially, you know, within fashion also as well within the beauty and nail industry as well. So it's up to us to really be supporting each other and to not see each other as black people in the, in the beauty and fashion community as competition. So that way we can build together. And then taking it like another, another thing, I had an epiphany, like uh, probably like this time last year, 
the digital divide is so real and it's something that's not talked about right uh, in these discussions either like for us especially we're behind you know the digital yeah. divide is so real like we know how to get online and have the feed tell us what we need or but so many people don't even know how to dm so many people don't even know how to share things Girl, you see how I was when we was trying to get on this, trying to figure out how to unlock my phone, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, the, the digital divide is going to affect everybody, but there are facts that it disproportionately affects Black people. You right. know, we just are still, we are still learning. Everybody, right. it is, it's generational, it's cultural. Right. It's it's very segmented, okay? So right. the other piece that I've learned is that, so I started my page NC Black on because I want to showcase Black business because we still don't get recognition. You know, right. the James Beard Award for restaurants is just now starting to check for Black people. Probably like 2019 they started, okay? So, but for me as a nail tech, I'm willing to do extra work so that I, me, we can all get the recognition because Absolutely. I'm trying to cover all the bases, you know? Right. And while I'm covering all the bases and tell you about this restaurant, this clothing store, this workout place, also check out Nail Yeah, you know? So I can reach those people who are, who are not um, even gonna ever see me because they may not, you know, in Raleigh here, I'm in Southeast Raleigh. I feel comfortable over here where I am. I'm right across from, uh, St. Augustine's College. The reason why I say that is because in Raleigh, typically people from Raleigh, if you grew up in Southeast Raleigh, they moved to Cary, they moved to North Raleigh. You know, um, we are having a, I don't think we're at a tipping point, but we're having a revival. Everybody coming back to Southeast Raleigh. Right. It's, it's more gentrified. It's becoming gentrified. So mm -hmm. I, moved, I moved back here with the uh, mind, the mindset of like, why can't we have a little five points? Why can't we yeah. have you know, a uh, uh, black neighborhood or a black shopping center with cool shops because I've yeah. seen that in other cities now that I've traveled. But I know I'm kind of going all out there, but <laughs> I promise I'm gonna bring it back. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that we just don't see, we just don't see that. It, we, it's hard to find people, especially if you don't know to look to use hashtags, you know, right. So many people still don't know how to use hashtags. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you had a top five list of your favorite nail arts, who would they be and why? Child, that's a lot. I can't answer that. I can't. I was looking at that when you sent that. I see other people do it. Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you one person who sticks out in my mind. Editorial nail. I'm yeah, going to tell you, you my, she's a total package. That's why. I, I love her branding. Um, I love the visuals. Uh, I love the nail art. Um, what is this girl? V I X X U E, I think her name is. She Viv does. Shoe? Girl, I love her videos. How does she paint so detailed? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are worth four or $500 press ons. Those are, it's amazing. I can't name anybody else. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Now, if you could offer one valuable piece of advice for up and coming nail techs in the arts, what would it be? Um, get to work. <laughs> get to work. That's really yeah. it. Like, practice as much as you can. Um, be open. Have grace with yourself. Like, don't be too hard on yourself. Right. Um, You'll get it eventually. Just keep trying. Yeah, keep absolutely. Practicing. Yeah. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. Last but not least, where can people find you on social media? How can people support you and your work and your business? Um, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook uh, and TikTok. I don't post there much. I need to because that's what the young people are doing. Um, <laughs> nail, right. nail, yeah. <laughs> nail, yeah. Nail, yeah. Nail, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Another one right there, Nail. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and you can find me on the website too. Please go. All right, absolutely. 
Yeah, it's really, really <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much, Crystal, for jumping onto the show. Um, I love what you're doing. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for dropping gems. Thank you so much as well for sharing your story and experience being in the nail industry. And, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, it's very, very cool what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this. And I'm really a big fan, too. I love your nail art as well. Yes, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Asia. Yeah, thank you. Take care. You have a great weekend. You yeah, too. you too. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also, follow me on my social media platforms and visit my website, asiaticbird.com, and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care, stay healthy, and stay beautiful. Bye-bye.